At age 24, in 1877, Michelson started teaching physics and chemistry at the Naval Academy. He thought it would be fun to measure the speed of light as a demonstration project for his students. Equipped to the Grunov micrometer, a rotating mirror by Fortin Company, and a heliograph by Kobel, Michelson deployed his instruments as in the sketch. The plot of this historic light beam is carved in stone forever near the modern Michelson building at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. In the fall of 1879, Michelson moved to Washington, D.C. to work for a government-sponsored Velocity of Light project, the, this presenting the opportunity for a sabbatical in Europe, where the young Michelson wo worked with Helmholtz at Potsdam, 1880, and with Cornu at École Polytechnique de Paris in 1882. Michelson went to Potsdam well prepared with um, an instrument made to determine the existence of luminophoros ether. The instrument was built by Schmidt and Hirsch, um, Hirsch and at Michelson's specification. The idea was simple but unbelievably ingenious. A beam of light was split in two with a semi-transparent mirror. The resulted sub-beam traveled one meter in perpendicular to each other direction and then we uh, reflected back to, uh, to the semi-transparent mirror only to recombine. Interference fringes were obtained which could be manipulated by moving one of the mirrors with a micrometer. Moving the micrometer with a half the wavelength, a few hundred nanometers, produced millimeter size fringes fringe sl uh, sliding on the screen. If the interferometer is positioned initially with one of the arm in uh, west-east direction and the other in south-north direction, the physical path traveled by light in west-east direction, back and forth, is longer than the south-north path because the whole system is moving east with the tangential, sp tangential speed of Earth's rotation of 0 0.5 kilometers per second. Actually, why not to take the speed of Earth in orbit, 30 kilometers per second, or the speed of the Sun with everything in its vicinity orbiting the galactic center at a speed of about 220 kilometers per second, or even the galaxy as a whole, which is moving at a velocity of approximately 600 kilometers per second. Night after night, in the basement of Postam Observatory, Michelson tried to find a shift in the position of the fringe attributable to the change of frame of reference. Nothing happened, and Michelson came back in USA feeling that he failed to detect the luminophores ether. Only if he knew what he just proved. He proved that in any inertial frame the law of physics are the same and the space may contract, time may dilate to accomplish the above. For 20 seconds or so we, rotot uh, we ro uh, uh, rotated the interferometer 90 degrees back and forth. No free shift occurred. You may say, this is because your interferometer is not sensitive enough. You may be ra right, but trust me, even if we could detect 0 0.01 fringe shift, we would see nothing. Michelson moved to civil light and took a teaching position uh, at at what now is called Case Western Research Univers Reserve University in Cleveland, where he partnered with Morley and built an instrument much sturdier than the prototype. The instrument was set up on a large soapstone block floating on mercury with a um, multiple light path of around 10 meters in each arm. 
In this setup, 0.01 fringe shift could be detected, while the expected shift was 0.04. No change in interference pattern was detected with when instrument was rotated. Again, the experiment proved that in any inertial frame, the laws of physics are the same, and the space may contract, time may dilate to accomplish the above. It took another 20 years or so to transform this ad hoc observation into the theory of special relativity.